Okay, I'm going to desperately try and do this in a three minute YouTube attention time span and I am all but sure I'm going to fail miserably. But a critique that has been made on the video starting the series about why gold and silver is a scam and why you know it's not really a good buy opportunity right now and everything else. It's like, it, basically they're talking about when the fiat currency collapses and when your dollar's worth pennies on the dollar and when all this shit happens, you know, gold and silver is going to balloon in buying power. They're making a mistake. They are confusing an increase in price with an increase in buying power. Okay? Point blank. Okay? It just, they are. Here is buying power pegged against 1971 money for gold, silver, cash, and the Dow Jones. This is pegged against 1971 money when we ended the gold standard. Has gold and silver outperformed the U.S. dollar? Yes it would be hard for it to underperform. Since 1971, great. Now how has silver stacked up to things other than cash? For most of this chart it underperformed. How did gold, for a good deal of this chart, but not quite most, it underperformed? Gold has historically been more valued than silver, with the exception of that very obvious spot just over there. If you look up at the top and peaks, you'll see at one point silver actually peaked over gold. Where are we in relation to the average right now? Well, the average right now, uh, in the change from the peak, all-time high of buying power of gold one of these last things and stackers precious metal heads wouldn't have sold their gold then they would have said it's only going up I'm in rock call and as a result they've lost about 50 percent of their buying power they could have had in reality they've lost about 300 percent of the buying power they could have had to upwards of 800% of the buying power they could have had because if they'd been smart and sold their gold high and bought in to the scam stock, to the scam markets, they'd have eight times the buying power they do right now. They would actually have created wealth and increased buying power. In the same time, from that greater peak to today, the price of gold has increased 200%. It's, it, it costs twice as much to buy an ounce of gold as it did then. The buying power of gold, from the peak on that chart to today, has decreased 30%. You can only buy 70 cents on the dollar worth of goods you could back then. The price doubled and you can buy less. Don't confuse price with buying power. They are not the same thing at all. Double your money, cut your buying power by almost a third. Silver's pretty much the same story, okay? Silver is actually a weirder story. Because from the peak on that chart to now, silver is 90 cents on the dollar. It's price change. With inflation, it's 20 cents on the dollar. You can buy 20 cents of goods for every dollar you locked up in silver from that peak to down here. I'm pointing this out to stress a concept that most metalheads miss. 
Can you not make... Am I... They're mistaking me saying that now is not a time to buy with... There's never a time to buy. Alternatively, if you'd stuck... At, at the lows here in buying power, if you if you had if you had looked and say, wow, that's an all-time low in buying power. It hasn't been that low in buying power in decades. And said, what the hell? I'm gonna buy. Great. This is what the people who went in and said, you know, in the in the in the in the mother of all bear markets and said, I'm buying gold, I'm buying silver. Because they were basing their decision not on price, but on buying power. The decisions to buy gold and silver right now are not based on buying power. If they were, you'd be shorting it right now. Or you'd be doing short-term buying. You'd be scalping it in uh, the electronic markets where it's efficient to do so. That's the thing y'all got to get through your head. Right now, silver is about 50% to me, gold is about 50% above its median buying power price, and silver is about 40% above its median buying power price in today's dollars. When you look at things in terms of percents of buying power and not dollars, you know, that's the things like, don't measure your wealth in dollars. No, measure your wealth in buying power. Measure your buy and sell opportunities in buying power power. When things are undervalued regardless of price, regardless of whether the price is an all-time low or an all-time high, when they're undervalued in terms of buying power in terms of price, that is when they are a buy. When they are overvalued in terms of buying power, in terms of price, regardless of whether it is an all-time high in price or an all-time low in price, or anything in between, that is a sell opportunity for the long run. This is the thing you metalheads need to get through your head, because you say you're buying for the day 20, 30 years from today when everything goes in. Well, on that day, the ultimate equilibrium point is going to be buying power, median buying power. So you're still over buying. The price may shoot through the roof. You know, someday silver will be worth $50,000 an ounce. Gold will be worth, who the hell knows, could be worth a billion dollars an ounce. But is that an increase in buying power? Will that future day where an ounce of silver will buy Oh, let's just use a, a reasonable number you might see in your lifetime. That future day when an ounce of silver will buy a $100 bill. Will $100 buy the same as the $20 to $25 you're locking up in it today? That's the way you need to look at it. And you may not be buying dollars. Who knows what the hell you'll be translating and who knows what we'll be using for money in the future. But if you're measuring things in buying power, which is what we're trying to drive home with this little series of videos and things, you don't care what the money is, you don't care what people value, you don't care everything else, because your cumulative buying power is more than whatever you traded to acquire it. That's a beneficial transaction, and that's the transaction you need to focus on making people. Um, I'll ex because I've already almost used 10 minutes, I'm going to explain my changes to the um, experiment chart in the next bit. What I would like to hear from people is, it, are the colors now readable? Because they said they couldn't read the colors, they had a hard time reading out the chart. I've, I've changed some things to do that, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll hope we get that. So, uh, I, I like I said, we'll get the inflation numbers next week. We will finish adjusting this chart accordingly based on that and continue to make our projections and explain where our logic's at and everything accordingly. Um, Metalhead's going to hate these videos, but 
I, I'm not trying to please the metalheads. I'm not trying to... If you'll notice, almost every metalhead is in the gold and silver selling business. They're, try, they're trying to sell you gold and silver, and they're trying to convince you why gold and silver is a good buy. Imagine that, a salesman telling you their product is a good buy. I wonder why. Might it be they want you to buy it? Could be. Don't know. Peace out, I'll see you next week.